Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about the plunder bug. It's a network sniffer put out by Hack5. So let's get started. Okay, so ever since I got this from Hack5, I've been wanting to play with it, and it's been sitting on my desk for like two months now. So uh, this is my first chance I've had to kind of take it out of the packaging and actually get my hands dirty with it. So it's called a uh, plunder bug, and it's put out by Hack5, and I've talked about some of their products before. Um, I'm not sponsored by Hack5, just a very happy customer of theirs. I've used a number of their stuff, and, and they have just really um, great designs to uh, to making your life simpler for diagnostics or repetitive tasks. Um, you can also use their devices for malicious intent. Please don't do that. Do not use it for malicious, malicious intent. I don't need this video taken off YouTube. Um, but they are very interesting tools, either if you're a sysadmin or sometimes if you want to do pranks on people. But uh, this is a little bit more if you're a sysadmin, specifically a network engineer, and you want to do some network sniffing, and you want to sniff some traffic between uh, one device and another device that's using Ethernet. So um, so this is all that's in the packaging. You got an anti-static bag, a little you know quick advice card, and the uh, plunder bug. Pug. So it just has two Ethernet ports and a USB-C. It doesn't come with a USB-C cable, or if it did, I lost it, but I have one, another one. And uh, basically what you do is you just put it between two network devices and then plug the USB-C into your computer, and your computer will recognize it as an Ethernet port. And so from there, your computer, you can uh, run Wireshark or some kind of network sniffing uh, traffic, and all the traffic that goes from one port to another port, uh, which is transparent to the end device, also gets mirrored down the USB port, which is to your virtual ethernet cable. So if you're running Wireshark, you will be able to see all the packets that are going down uh, these ports. Y this also can work as a switch, which is kind of interesting. So when you plug this into your computer, your computer thinks it's an ethernet port, and your computer will then use this as well to go out the internet. So not only do you have your, if you want to call it your victim device here, um, or your target device, and then you also have your computer, it's a switch. So both of these devices can get out onto the internet down this one ethernet port. So one question I had about this is, how is it powered? Does it need PoE? What if you use a phone that is power over ethernet? Um, will it interrupt the power? So I did some testing with that. And uh, it does interrupt the power. So if you have, a, say, a, a phone like I have here, and it's powered over Ethernet with PoE, um, if you unplug that from the phone and plug it into here, this will not accept that as power. And more importantly, it will not pass the power down to the target device. That would be a cool feature if it did, um, but it doesn't do that. So if you have a PoE device, let's say um, like a camera or a phone or something like that, uh, that you want to sniff the traffic on, um, you would then have to supply alternative power to that device during the sniffing uh, operations. Um, so there was that, uh, which is a little disappointing, but not the end of the world. Everything else about it seems to work really, really well. And so the second thing I wanted to do was, can I sniff a phone call successfully in real time um, with this device? So I have a VoIP phone here. I'm going to put it between uh, the phone and the switch. I'm going to plug this into my laptop. And today we're going to actually try to sniff a phone call, an unencrypted phone call, uh, with the plunder pug. Um, the other thing I'll say is that it's only a 10100 Ethernet, which for today's test is fine. But if you were wanted to test something that was gigabit speeds, um, you know, let's say it's a server environment or something like that, uh, you would be choked down by this down to 10100. Um, plus, I'm not 100% sure if it'd be able to handle that many packets a second. Maybe it's something we'll do. We'll do a quick speed test on it and uh, see if the latency spikes when we stress it out. Um, but my first test is can we grab a uh, phone call out of this device by plugging it in between a VoIP phone? So with that, let's get started. Okay, so I got the plunder bug here. I have my USB-C, so I'm just gonna plug that in. And I have my phone, so I'm just gonna plug it, uh, the phone into the one side. And then I have the ethernet cable that goes to the switch on the other side. And there's a little green light indicator on there that says that it's powered on. Um, that's it. I haven't put any config onto it at all. I literally just opened it out of the box and plugged it into the computer. So if we look at the control panel, uh, if we look at network, you're going to see here that there's a Ethernet adapter 2. And that is the new plunder bug. So if I actually unplug this, you'll see it'll it'll be disabled and removed. And then if I plug it back in, it'll actually be connected. So it'll show up as a new Ethernet port. So then with that, um, let's actually open up Wireshark. And let's sniff the Ethernet 2 adapter. So I'm going to start capturing. So now this is all the traffic that is going through 
uh, these two devices. So it's going through all the traffic that's going from the phone out to the network, as well as uh, all the computer traffic going out as well, um, and any other broadcast traffic that is being able to be seen on the network. So just as if you were to plug your computer straight into the network interface. Okay, so I've got my uh, packet capture running now, and I'm gonna make a test phone call, and I found a funny number online, and I wanna see if I can capture the voice traffic of that. So I'm just gonna redial this number here. Thank you for calling the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hogwarts is an Perfect. exceptional boarding school. All right, so we've called Hogwarts witchcraft boarding school and um, and so I've captured all the packets using the the plunder bug so I'm going to stop the capture in Wireshark here and I'm going to ask Wireshark to analyze it for VoIP calls and here it's found the one call here it has the start time and all the packets and the protocol and all that stuff and so if we hit play stream it'll analyze it and let's see if we can actually play back that call here it is for calling the Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Hogwarts is an exceptional boarding school. So there you go. So I was able to, just by intercepting the Ethernet cable with the plunder bug, um, actually capture those voice calls um, and and using Wireshark and, and just uh, mirroring it into my computer, which is, which is great. Okay. So like I was saying, we were able to uh, capture that voice call using Wireshark, using the Plunder Bug, out of the gate, ready to work. Um, there is a setting that you can put onto the device, either running a PowerShell command or you can do it mainly on your computer, where your computer won't hang off of the Plunder Bug. So if you want your computer to be um, listening to that traffic a lot more stealthily and not have the plunder bug be a switch, then you can run this PowerShell command and it will uh, basically not be a switch. It'll just be a straight pass through, but then it'll still mirror the traffic to your computer uh, so you can capture it with something like Wireshark. Um, so that's how you can capture voice traffic. Then the second test I wanted to do is, uh, well, maybe the third test if you include the PoE one, um, was just you know, how much packets can I really send through this? Can I do like a simple speed test? And will I notice latency spike if I'm uh, uh, stressing the device out? So let's just do that now. So if I'm on my computer running through the USB-C part of it, and let's just do a quick speed test. And I'll do a ping test at the same time. So I'm just gonna ping the default gateway to try to take the internet out of the equation. So, so far with this test, I'm able to push 70 megs, which is about what, that's, what the internet connection that I'm on can now can do, and um, not see a latency spike. Um, but when I'm transmitting, I am seeing a latency spike, you can see here, to the uh, router. Um, I'm not sure if that was an anomaly or, or just the unit itself. But generally speaking, it does look like you can, you can do 100 megs through it and um, not, not really uh, have any performance issues, which is really, really gonna be important with the voice side of it. I was really happy that I was able to mirror voice traffic in real time to the computer and that the Plunderbug was able to do that uh, without any issues. So um, that was uh, kind of a cool experiment. Okay guys, so that's the plunder bug, and that's how you can actually capture a voice call with it, with a network sniffer. Um, this is really, really great, especially for diagnostics. Uh, you wanna see any drop packets or latency or what might be happening. Uh, this is a really, really simple, simple but really kind of powerful device. Um, you can just pop it in line of the two ethernet devices and off it goes. Um, I, I, you know, a couple of nice to haves, I wish it could do PoE pass through. I wish it was gigabit instead of 10100. Um, but that's basically it. I, I think it, everything else you could ever want out of a simple network sniffer, this thing's got it. So if ever you need to do network diagnostics, you might want to consider picking one of these up. Um, or if you want to try to record your VoIP calls or whatever it might be, uh, consider one of these guys uh, as well. Um, we're going through a lot of the Hack 5 stuff. I bought a bunch of their gear over the last year and I have a channel, uh, a playlist about all the Hack 5 reviews. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and uh, as we roll out more of these videos and go through all of those products, because they have really, really cool stuff, including the plunder bug. Um, I got uh, the rubber duck, which I used a lot, which is a keyboard injection tool. Um, I just did one recently on the, um, the screen crab, which is an HDMI, man in the middle HDMI screen capture. They have a lot of really cool products. And so we put them through the pace this year and see what they're actually capable of. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're interested in those. Um, and then we'll be rolling on to the next set of videos with cloud products again. Anyways, guys, be sure to thumbs up if you like the plunder bug. Hit that subscribe if you're interested in more of Hack 5 reviews. 
Thanks. Have a great day.